Welcome, folks, to the late edition of Week 7's installment of the Fantasy Report. I'm your host this evening, Split Chest Hair. Well, this week we had an interesting week of scores, including a tie. So let's get right to that scoreboard. In Conference A, Max Megaman crushes a drive and beat the real McCoys 98-47. to An excited McCoy GM Steve Montgomery said, See, I knew I could get to the bottom of the conference. The league congratulates you. Coco Nono Express defeated Steeler Nation 92-84. to Steeler coach Nick Stamick was amazed at how well Express owner Cody Parman could pick up and put down those points. He said, it's like that's the only thing he knows how to do. Rudy's gang moves up from the bottom by downing Horseneck hitters 128-96. to Horseneck GM Roger Miller said, I thought I had the right portions of food figured out last week. Apparently my team had too many carbohydrates. In Conference B, apparently the Corduroys were breakaways as the Hormel Spammers beat Mark's Power Surge 109-87. to Spammer coach Brian Weigel said, I was glad to see the Power Surge after last week's loss. We needed an easy game. The Incredibles have been up and down, but they were up this week as they defeated the winless Killer Dogs 90-59. to Incredible owner Tracy Weigel said she wanted Killer Dogs coach Kelly Dobbins to know that she still loves her and feels bad for beating her. <laughs> Girls. The Smashtown Showtimers keep plugging along as they down Vandalay Industries 94-55. Vandalay coach John Jobes is starting to show signs that this losing streak is getting to him by going around and asking everyone, Is it Lupus? Is it Lupus? In Conference C, Red Alert continues their dominance as they dismantle Jordan's Love Shack 158-90. Love Shack coach Cody Williams asks, I wonder if I can go ahead and draft Stanford's quarterback now. The Trash Talkers came back late and beat Chanky for life 53-48. Trash Talker GM Ken Fritz said, At first I was going to go for the low score. Or rather, I had the low score. But then once I saw that my opponent scores like I do, I figured, oh, I might as well try to win. Way to rally the troops. The team formerly known as Winning and Grinning, Tebow Stakes, ended up tying the Raiders 92-92. to Now with the new collective bargaining agreement, the league was able to keep rules that states no games can end in a tie, and included tiebreakers to determine a winner. The first tiebreaker is the team with the lowest total bench points. If the teams are still tied at that point, then the next tiebreaker is a team with the bench quarterback with the lowest points. If the teams are still tied, the team who has the best deal to bribe the commissioner gets the win. That's kind of an unwritten rule. As Tebow Stakes had the lowest total bench points this week, they pick up the win in the tie. Yeah. A happy stake owner Cody Hilling took a parting shot at the Raiders by saying, well, I guess the name Dave Bungard didn't save you this week. In Conference D, Team Find a Cure Because Cancer Sucks hands Team Awesome their second loss in a row, 99-91. Team Sucks GM Randy Sturm told Team Awesome owner David Weigel, Boy, you better stick with soccer. Real Mountain Man down Team Awesome Waterboys, 90-85. Real Man owner Mike Berry has been quietly going about his business lately, as apparently he is having some difficulty in securing Real Mountain Men to endorse his team. Best Brands comes out on top in the Ferris Bowl as they beat So Random 144-44. In commenting on her winning strategy, Brands coach Sarah Ferris said that she just put him in a quarter and wouldn't let him out. To which So Random GM Hannah Ferris responded, Nobody puts Hannah in a corner. In our two non-conference games, Blundering Herd trounces Blundering Black Bay 123-32. Apparently, Black Bay decided to celebrate his win last week by not showing up this week. Ren McCormick's Slugbug fights through the controversy and drops Big D's 110 to 90. Big D's owner Darren Montgomery was quoted saying, I guess having my players use meat scented deodorant wasn't the best idea. Man, those kids can swarm. Well, our Team of the Week honors goes out to Eric Hilling and the Red Alert, as they scored 158 points in Week 7. Eric Hilling gave a shout out to his son saying, Hey son, where are you? I can barely see you in the standings. Well, our bye weeks this week, in week 8, the Falcons, Bears, Packers, Jets, Raiders, and Buccaneers are on byes. So make sure you check your lineup and make sure that you don't have any of these players starting. With the byes this week, it could mean that we will set new league records for low scores. Well, that wraps it up for this week. Tune in again for next week's report. And remember, if you find yourself in a tie, chocolate or cash will do fine. Thank you, 
and good night.